Welcome to the F3 Fantasy Football Podcast with your host, Mega Dave, Big Maul, and Jay DeCane Lancaster. Winning your league never smelled so good. Let's get it poppin'. What up, what up, what up with it? This is the F3 Fragcom Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Mega Dave, hey, joining my boys, my win, co-host, Big good. Maul, how we living? Hey, looking good. And, of course, my dog over here in Honolulu Blue, Jay the Kang. How we living? So we a Lions fan this week. <laughs> we a Lions fan this week? I don't know, yeah, man. I, talked about- I don't know, man. I've been, been a Lions, Lions fan. I've <laughs> been a Lions fan. What you – what you – what – what you – what – come on, man. What you talking about? I am doing swell, well, and very, very good. Oh, Chilling like a villain. They did good, man. Had they some, did really had good. Some, had some, got some paws blowouts this week. <laughs> some claps, some cheekers this week. Man, what a you know, week. Pacheco actually went in, too. We're going to talk about all of that. But first, as always, with the F3 Fragcom fantasy football. So fragrance first, football second. So let's holler and see what we are looking like and what we're smelling like today. Because, you know, if you smell good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good. Mm. This week's fragrance spotlight. Damn, I smell good. Well, as always, if y'all are new to this podcast here, we like to smell good. Every day, every week, we bring in a fragrance, different budgets, all the way from low, low to Kang Kang. And we try to see what we're smelling like, introduce you guys to the game because we want to bring something different to it. The one that I'm bringing today, it's one, like I said, we're running out of hot weather where I'm at. But for most of y'all, if you're in hot weather, uh, you're still going to be able to pop this thing, Prada, Luna Rosa Ocean. So y'all probably, like y'all see the the thing, we're wearing Dior's and wearing Chanel's, Prada's another one. This is really famous for soapy fragrances. This one here is a barbershop fragrance. And what I mean with barbershop, it's powdery. You know, it's got this blue type of ocean feel. You hear the name ocean and that's the first thing you think, but it's like powdery. Like if you can smell it with your, your nose, like powder, <laughs> not like Miami powder, completely different kind of powder. But <laughs> this is us. You see, my eyes got what big. Podcast we on this week? Like, what <laughs> what we <laughs> you smell this party. <laughs> I blew some of my uh, my DraftKings money. <laughs> well, you had a good, you had a good time. <laughs> yeah, but this is citrus again. One of my favorite notes is citrus. This is citrus. Pink pepper, lavender, like I mentioned, it's powdery. It starts off kind of sharp and bright, soapy, finishes off smooth. This is another one that ain't going to set you back too bad. 75 bucks. You can find it online. If you get a tester like this one, I think I got it for 65 bucks. Find you some deals, but make sure they're authentic. The big thing is get your nose on some stuff. Start smelling around like I told you last week. Go into department stores. Just have them put stuff all over you and smell what it smells like on your skin, not just on paper. But that's what I'm rocking, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. Rocking Big the Maul, crowd Tell me what you're rocking today. A head turner, eye popper. You want somebody to walk up to you, man or woman, and say, hey, what you wearing? Well, when they do, all you want to say is, why? As in Y-S-L-Y. This fragrance took the game by storm a couple of years ago, and everybody was rocking it. Either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Like There's really no in-between. Kane probably hates it. Mm-hmm. I know I love it. You got notes of apple, grapefruit, ginger, some lavender, oh, I love tonka it. bean, cedar. Man, you can wear this at a club or a house party or at work or wherever. Like, you turning heads. You smelling good. And that's the whole purpose of what we're doing to teach you how to smell good. So that's my fragrance today. Why mm-hmm. sell why? What you got, Karen? What high class fragrance you got today? So you might not believe me, but Maul, I do like some lower mid-tier fragrances. I don't just, I'm not just a flashy, niche, expensive. <laughs> I'm going to cut the grass. Going to the gym. Going, going to the gym. outside. <laughs> wash the car. Um, no, nah, we don't even go to the gym like that. But, you know, I'll, I'll put something. Those Summer Scents by Dolce Gabbana. I ain't going to front. 
I I collect. Well, I used to collect those. I I got two of them. I think somewhere around here. But you know, I will rock designers time from time. You know what I mean? I even tried to put them in the little the little candle wax things to make the house smell good, but that didn't work out too well. But today we ain't going the designer route, right? We we we're not going to do that today around Surprise. these parts of the kingdom. So I was like, dang, man, it's, it's, I'm feeling good. Got a victory. Jack, got a victory. I told y'all it was going to be a blowout. Y'all don't be listening. Jameson Williams coming back this week. The Lions really going to open up this week. So I figured, man, what should I wear today? And I had on blue. So I might as well just go with one of these blue boys. You understand? It might look like a Smurf bottle, but it's not. It's a, where's my, see, I'm a, avid buyer of Louis Vuitton, so they send me little <laughs> stuff like this. So when I go to bed, I just wrap up and things like this a little bit. Anyway, afternoon that's, swim. That's light. Yeah, that's light. <laughs> afternoon swim by Louis Vuitton. Mm, that's nice. The words are right there, right? I get about some people get mid seven, eight hours. Depending here, I get about eight Damn. to nine hours pushing it a little bit, maybe. But man, when you talk about it's just two words for this: citrus and spice. Afternoon swim. It it smells like you took an afternoon swim, right? And the more and more we go through these and go through some of the fragrances that I have, and I'm gonna do some other things. I'm gonna get some stuff sent to me to go over that too. You'll find a lot of the Louis Vuitton DNA is a lot of it is almost the same at times, right? It, because they put these they put these bottles out, and they put them in collections, so. This is part of one of the collections. I think it's California Dreaming on the Beach, Afternoon Swim. Oh, man. And it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It I mean, y'all nice. can see, watch the. Mm. It just, I, I just went swimming. Just, just like that. I, I, that's all I can say. I just went just swimming, like, you know? Just like that. Splash. Just like that. Splash. <laughs> just like that. You know? He's over here wet. Pause. <laughs> oh, pause. Pause. Super pause. <laughs> but no, guys. I mean. There, there's plenty of things that I know there's some dupes out there that you, you know, and just because I'm dumb and I go out there and I spend a lot of money on frags, that doesn't mean you have to do the same thing, right? There, there's other frags that you can look into that might give you some similarities to some of the Louis Vuittons that I put up. But yeah, it, it man, it's just, it, it, you get, you can smell the, the bergamot and the, the orange and and it, it's just citrus, citrus like you swimming in Florida. So that's my take for the day. I don't know if y'all can really see Man. it or not, but you'll notice. That hurt not. Well, well, when you because my, my wife wears this too. So don't, okay. don't get it twisted. But uh, hey, after it's gone, I can spend two hundred fifteen bucks and go you get a refill. That. So fill it back up. Right, but if you notice on all my bottles, all my Louis Vuitton bottles. When you go, you can get you can get the date put on them, or you can get your name put on them. But all my bottles got the same thing, K and G, because I am the K. Yes, sir. We appreciate. It. Hey, something else too. Louis Vuitton is more expensive, but you can smell the quality of the the notes. Just like when you put on, like when you're paying for stuff, most of the time with these niche fragrances, I own mostly niche stuff too. But you can smell the difference, like between yeah. the two, right? So. Don't like me and Maul got very good fragrances. And be honest with you, you'll probably get if you're looking for compliments, you're gonna get more compliments more than likely with these because they they're synthetic, right? And they project a lot more. Those uh expensive fragrances, they are more natural and clean, and they're still gonna smell good. But just like he said, get out there, smell around and and find out what you like and get in your groove. So if if you want to buy a fragrance and spend a hundred dollars on something and pump it a whole bunch of times and get about twenty minutes out of it, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go to designer let, let me let me defend my YSL. Look, I don't know that Y S L Y that Y bro eight days. hours. I, mm -hmm. I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. No, I guarantee I you to. keep some in the car with you. Even even to, so, even with the designers with like this right here, I got this right here. This is the new Ralph, Ralph Lauren Alexa, right? Mm -hmm. It's an Alexa, it's supposed to be a perfume. You get four hours out of it. I mean, come on, man. These you know people why they do that? They're designed for when you go into the the store. They have a huge opening, so they project hard 
for the Absolutely. first 30 minutes. That's what they're meant yeah. for. When you're going by in the store, they spray you. You're like, God, dog, that thing. That's why they pump these citruses in them. That's true. That is. But just find out what you want. You don't have to, like he said, you don't have to jump out and spend 300 off rip, get you a 50, 60, $100 bottle and realize, oh, I like the smell of this orange. And then you can move on. But hey, all three of these, they're all killers. I love them all. You guys won't do wrong with any of them. But that's the fragrances we're rocking. If you're listening and you're watching on YouTube, put a comment down below. Tell us what you're put on your body today. But we're going to get into these Let's big moves and see what malls got happening. You ready, my boy? Big malls, big moves. All right, all right, all right. It's time for big mall, big moves. So listen, this. Uh oh, we 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 doubling up. Okay, big boss. Big malls, big. Hey, it's gonna be a big one too. A double Listen, big moves. This is my favorite time. This is the beginning of my favorite time of the fantasy season. This is week five, and now these bye weeks are starting. So now people got players that can't play this week. Mm-hmm. Now you probably got some people in your league that is like one and three, zero oh and four. They desperate. Now they got two players, the best players on the bye. Guess mm-hmm. what? I start rubbing my hands. I start, hey, hey, I, it goes down in the DMs. Look, I'm sitting, I'm sitting out trades. I'm doing all Third kinds man. of stuff. Listen, Austin Eckler, Mike Evans, Deshaun Watson, Mark Cooper, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf. All of these guys are on by. These are major players on somebody's team, and they got to figure out what yep. to do. Because some people don't draft well. Some people don't have deep teams. I'm usually six deep, six, seven deep with running backs. Mm-hmm. Got me a solid tight end, got probably about four or five yep. deep on wide receiver. So every Tuesday morning, I'm looking, I'm looking at everybody's lineups who's struggling. And I'm just sending, I'm sending trade offers. Let's talk about some high sales, some sale highs first. Yep. Chris Godwin, 19.4 points this week. That's great. But the big piece is Mike Evans left the game early. May miss some time. You're probably going to think, well, I'm, I'm going to keep Chris Evans. Let me keep Chris Godwin. Now, go ahead and go ahead and go ahead and see what kind of offer you can get. He had 19 points. He may even have a good week this week, but eventually Mike Evans will come back, and Mike Evans is the alpha. And when Mike Evans comes back, if you look at his stats the first three weeks, Chris Godwin didn't do much. I had, I had him on my team. I had to put him on the bench because he wasn't doing much. So this is a good opportunity to sell mm. Chris Godwin. Look. They may be that you, you may be able to get Mario Cooper, Chris Godwin. You may be able to get Kenneth Walker for Chris Godwin. Like somebody might be struggling this bye week. People are desperate. The next sell high, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs dropped 28 points this week. Great. Awesome. But he did that with a rookie quarterback who mm-hmm. couldn't throw the ball downfield because they were getting swarmed. How many fumbles he had? Two or three fumbles? The, what, O'Connell? Yeah. So they had to get a ball to Jacobs. But if you look at the weeks before, he didn't score over 15 points the three the three weeks prior. Oakland is pass happy. Jimmy G's coming back this week. Josh Jacobs going to fall back a year. Sell him now while you got a chance. Next dude, DJ Moore. Fool's goal. This is a fool's goal. 27 points. It ain't even DJ Moore's fault we selling high because just it's Justin Fields. Justin Fields is too inconsistent to be comfortable with starting DJ Moore every week. Like Justin Fields is about to go to Superman mode. So what Superman mode is he's not really throwing the ball. He's about to run. He's gonna have about 20, 20 rushing attempts a game, probably the next week, this next week coming going forward. He don't have time to throw the ball. So guess what? Sell DJ Moore while you can. And the last person for the sale high, you named it, y'all mentioned him earlier, Isaiah Pacheco. Look, you dropped 25 points. He, he clapped some Pachecos this week. He, he got busy. But guess what? That's not what they do in Kansas City. So, yeah, it was a good week. But they like to pass the ball. No. But that's what they do. You're not going to have Mahomes there and you're going to run the ball 20 times. That's not happening. So if you can go ahead and get rid of Pacheco, Go ahead and slide new Pachicos to somebody else's team. Our buy low. <laughs> and this one kind of hurts me because I like this guy. Ramondre Stevens. He got to go. He, like, if, like, 
Somebody, some owner out there is struggling because they drafted yep. Ramondre at the end of the first, beginning of the second, and they were depending on him. And they didn't realize Big Zeke was coming in, and they're in a legit running back by committee now. And it's hurting all kinds of fantasy matches. But guess what? Zeke's still kind of chubby. He's going to run out of gas. New England's going to start losing. They are losing. And what they're going to have to do, they're going to, go to, they're going to go to hurry up offense. They're going to have to put Ramondre in there. They've got to duck, duck it down to Ramondre. And he can run in between He can run in between the tackles too. So he's going. To, the cream is going to rise to the top eventually with Ramondre. Take advantage of this now so you can have a good player later on. Next guy. Probably the second fastest person in the league. But unfortunately, the fastest person in the league is on his team. We're talking about Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle had a slow start to the season, 11, 12 points a game. Eventually, he's going to shine. You look at his first, his first year, he did great. His second year, when Tyreek came on, he still did great. He's struggling now, but, man, the guy with that speed and those good hands, eventually he's going to get off. This is the best time to try to get them. So if you can, make some offers. I guarantee you that Waddle owner is looking around anyway. Next guy scored, scored 33 points in week one. But just this past week, he only scored two points. And he probably returned from injury a little quicker than he should have. And we're talking about Aaron Jones. They got to run that ball over there in, in, in Green Bay. They're going to have to run the ball. A.J. Dillon to use your word, Kang, is trash. <laughs> A.J. Dillon is trash. They're they going to have to get that man the ball. The breaking news, they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't help it last week. Breaking they news. couldn't help it last <laughs> week because of the team they played. Mm. But this is a good opportunity to go ahead and try to grab them. Swarmed them. And the last by low. And this is a guy I like, mm-hmm. but I already, I already know, I already knew this was going to start happening. Miles Sanders. Oh, got two more battles. I'm sorry, Miles Sanders. He had 19 yards, six fantasy points. His backup, Chuba Hubbard, had more fantasy points than than he did. Chuba had almost eight. He had eight fantasy points. He run around up. Look, it's it's a problem. Now, granted, Miles Sanders was on pace to have the most targets by. Any running back ever in the history of, of, of the NFL, but Miles Sanders is going to do what Miles Sanders is going to do, and he's going to he's going to fall off. But he's going to have ups and flows, and this is one of those times where he's on the low end. This is a good opportunity, especially if you're a Chuba Herbert owner. Go ahead and see if you can make an offer and get Miles Sanders too, so you can have that tandem. And my last by low for sure, and I say this for last, is the elephant in the room. I know. Detroit won and everything, but look, Jameer Gibbs, man. Jameer Gibbs, man. Got to buy low on him, man. Look, he hasn't been doing good. He has not been doing good. He showed flashes. He shows flashes of greatness. But right now, he's been overshadowed by Monty, by David Montgomery. It's not going to always be like that. This is a team that's always in a shootout. You need you a guy who can catch passes, who can make big plays. Will he be a 20-point scorer down the line? Maybe, maybe not. But he's going to be somebody that on a week that you need him, he's going to get you what you need. He's, he, he may be the guy that, that decides whether you win or lose that week. So if you can buy long Jameer Gibbs now before he blows up, I would definitely do it. So and I think we mentioned this earlier. The waiver wires are kind of looking kind of scary out there, but there's still some good options. Look, I told you all last week, I said, in the waiver wire, I said, pick up the Chargers defense. What did the Chargers defense do this past week? They dropped a 20 twin twin, 20 points mm. on defense. So listen to your boy when I tell you about these waiver wires. First one, C.J. Stroud. He is the real deal. He's passing every eye test that you can, that you can imagine. 20-plus points the past three weeks. If he's on your way for a while, you need to grab him because he is putting up mm-hmm. numbers. Especially mm-hmm. now we got some bye weeks coming in. That's going to be a big deal. The next guy. This guy heard a bunch of rumblings about in the offseason saying that during the preseason, during practice, those DBs couldn't do anything with him. He just needed an opportunity. 
And last week, he got the opportunity with seven targets and dropped 26 points. I'm talking about Michael Wilson um, from the Arizona Cardinals. He got he has the goods. He got the goods. Every week, he scored higher and higher each week with more and more opportunities. I think they got a good one for the future. So if you can go ahead and get him on the way of ride, this is the best opportunity to get him. My next one is uh, Tyler Conklin. Who? Tyler Conklin. Plays for the Jets. Tight end for the Jets. Conk, conk. 17 targets in the last three weeks. When you're looking for tight ends, and tight ends is a rough position, but what you, what you, what you want from a tight end mm. is volume. You want opportunity. 17 targets, three weeks, that's plenty of opportunity. The Jets are the Jets losing, so they got to throw the ball. I mean, the quarterback's trash, but, I mean, he can at least throw the ball downfield, down five, five yards downfield to Tyler Conklin. That's what he's been doing. Uh, so look for Tyler Conklin on the waiver wire. And my last waiver wire option, we talked about a D last week. Pause. We're going to talk about a defense this week. We're going to talk about the Dolphins defense at home <laughs> against the Giants. Look, they may have been Giants, but they, they ain't Giants no more. These are small fellas here. These are little Giants. So they're at home mm-hmm. against the Giants. <laughs> guess, guess what happens when people go to, like, Atlanta – L.A., or they go to Miami to play. They get there a few days early. Guess what they're doing anyway? They know they're about to lose. That, so they out there partying. They're hanging out. they losing money. All mm-hmm. kind of stuff like that. So, yeah. So. Viper Club. That's already a detractor there. Those dudes going to be tired of They already know they ain't going to win. They just got beat down last night. <laughs> so they already know they're not going to win. Go ahead and run up and get that get the Dolphins defense. At least 15 points guaranteed. So listen, that's all I got. These big malls, big moves. Week five. Good luck. I got you back. What you got, Kane? Hey. Hey, we appreciate that. As always, them big mall. If y'all ain't paying attention, you're slipping. This is like he said, it's a big week. Pay attention, or you're gonna be uh caught out in <laughs> In the rain with your damn drawers down. So, but we're going to go over and see what's happening over in Kang's Corner. You are now in the presence of a Kang's Corner around the world in sports. Well, <clears throat> week one, Mr. Discount Double Check came out towards Achilles out for the year. Potentially, with his age, could have been done with his career. Well, according to reports, he done stuck his leg in the microwave, easy bake oven, and, and air fryer, and all kind of stuff, and probably has some mushrooms on the side. Our boy Aaron Rodgers is walking around what? in a shoe. Jesus. Usually this is a six-week process. Yeah. Jesus. And Christ. he was walking calmly last night in a walking boot. Well, not last night. I'm sorry. But during the game. <clears throat> that Jetson KC game, he was walking around in a common boot with no crutches. Jesus so Christ. his expectation is that he will be back playing this year. It'll be now, 2011. Yeah, put him in a bubble suit. Here, here's, here, here, here's the thing. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, man, at 40 years old, Tony Achilles, you walking around in 13 <laughs> days. My question is, was it really torn? Could he be pulling a Kobe coming with the wheelchair? I seen him with that. I seen the pop, but I, I, who knows? I mean, yeah, that's true. That it is Aaron Rodgers, and I think he, you know, he does have the will to play. And we all know if Aaron Rodgers is on the field, maybe, maybe not, because Detroit has beaten him four times in a row. <laughs> maybe he wants to get out there, right? Zach Wilson, whether we like him or not, and he is trash, tread ash, he showed some flashes in that game. I don't know if it's because of Kansas City defense or – but he did throw some passes. He made some <clears throat> over-shoulder passes that a lot of people can't make. That's been playing dimes. in the league. Yeah, he dropped some dimes. So mm-hmm. there is something there, right? And maybe with Aaron Rodgers' help, if he's there another year or two, Zach Wilson is the future of the Jets. 
but we can also look at Jordan Love and Jordan Love is trash. So, you know, who who knows how that that's going to work, but update and Rodgers is is walking in the shoe. He's doing better. Everything is good to go. So, wow. We'll see where that goes. You always know I got to talk about Colorado, so I'm going to talk about it make it quick. They got blew out last week, pause. But Travis Hunter, they thought he was expected to be out two weeks. He's actually going to be out two or three weeks, Mm. two or three more weeks. So, you know, they're going to let that liver, that lacerated liver, for a kid his age with the future that he's got. Hey, man, if you don't need him, don't play him. And we seen some freshmen last week with Colorado. Omarion and the cornerback they got, five-star. They showed some flashes last week that he can sit, you know, let that kid sit, let him get healed up, you know. And the, Travis Hunter is a good kid. I mean, just flat-out good kid. And people can talk negatively about Deion Sanders all they want to, but he's a good kid. I don't know if you've seen – you guys seen on the YouTube, in the YouTube world, or as you guys are listening, he had a sit-down with the guy that actually hurt him and put him out. And they had a they had a nice talk together, and they met up. They had a talk, and they they swap they squashed everything. So that's a good thing. Last news I got: everyone knows I'm a Detroit Lions fan. I'm from Detroit. I'm from the Motor City. Um, we built the best cars for GM Chrysler. We are known for our muscle cars. That's what we are known for. Uh, it just it is what it is. However, two years ago, we started with Ferraris. And what was announced this week? The Detroit Lions will get their Ferrari back this Sunday. (laughs) Jamison Williams will be on the field this Sunday. Now we're getting ready to put that photo to work. Understand what I'm saying? My big big dog said, Jameer Gibbs, go ahead and sell him. Y'all about to see that offense open up. Y'all about to see that offense open up. And Jameer Gibbs will be a part of that offense because if you notice, let me finish, Marley Maul. If you notice last year, when they brought Swift back out and when him and Jamison was on the floor, on the field together, they started passing the Swift out that backfield a little bit more. Gibbs has a little bit more than Swift. I will say that coming out that back, and he damn sure got the speed. So, with that being said, I will be suited and booted in Honolulu Blue on Sunday because we're going to have another blowout when we bring them Panthers because we're going to eat, eat, eat Bryce Young. <laughs> Bye high. Sorry, Ma. Bye high. Them Detroit Lions in that defense. Aiden Hutchinson <laughs> is a monster. Hey, man, I'm sorry, y'all. But hey, I, dude, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm, I'm, First I'm of all, I thought you were talking about a real Ferrari. Cool so, so I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is. He thinks when he, he is when he, hey, when he put them shoes on, <laughs> that's how I go. But I have never in, in my in my 48 years of living, right? We might not win the Super Bowl. We might not. We might not. But, man, I've never seen that we finally got a team on offense and defense. Detroit is ranked in the power rankings very high on both yep. offense and defense. And they got a lot of their defensive players and their main players in the offensive line hurt. And you still got David Montgomery. I I, I think he's going to break that, that record that Jamal got last year. I'm telling you all now. That's just my good. opinion, right? But that's all the news I got. Yeah. He looked real good. Three tutties. I mean, and that was on, coming man. back from an injury. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With the thigh mo- bruise. Most of y'all listening out there and watching, y'all, y'all know us three. We in a fantasy football league together. And after we do our draft, we do little competitions and do little side bets and things of that nature. Y'all check my record right now. I ain't playing. Y'all check that record. Y'all check that record. What I told y'all, rewind the tape. Rewind that. Five. What week five. are we on? Going in five. We go. We going in five. And what did I tell y'all we would be going into week five? Three and one. Check the tape. Check. <laughs> it. 
I did think I thought we were going to lose to Kansas City, but we pulled that out. Mm-hmm. But we still three and one. Check that tape. That's all no, I look good. I got. Y'all smell good. And hey, man, leave us some thumbs up down there, y'all, in the yep. YouTube world, right? Leave us some thumbs up. Leave us some comments. Leave us some, you know, if you want to be a guest speaker on the show, let us know, man. There's something new that we're trying. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to get through the NFL season, and then we're going to get to the next because we got a lot of stuff coming up that we can talk about. Yep. We got some political stuff coming up that we can talk about. Damn, for show. Sure. I can't wait. <laughs> Have a good week, and I holla. Hey, I appreciate that, as always. With what a bunch of news around. Mo, you got any uh, injuries? I know it's been I got a few slim minutes. pickings for injuries, too. You got any injuries? Okay. All right, let's go. Saturday Sidelines. Tracking fantasy football injuries. Look. Can't mention uh, Aaron Rodgers being 40 and walking around in a boot already at the rupture in his Achilles. I don't know how he's doing it, man. I'm 40 years old. If I get out of bed too fast, I'm probably taking two days off work. So, like, this is incredible. But let's talk about some legit folks. Uh, it may be playing, may not be playing. Uh, it's Tuesday. So we, we you'll get more, you, you'll get more updates throughout the week. So we can talk about what we know. My man. My main man, I cannot wait. Jonathan Taylor is expected to practice this week. He's been on the pup list. Look, they know they're laughing because they know I drafted him in the, in the fantasy league, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna wait it out. I, I said, I know I'm gonna struggle for a few weeks. I'm gonna wait it out. The wait is over, baby. He here. You are gonna hmm. keep struggling? He ain't playing. He ain't gonna out. play. I'm, I think I might be all right. I think I might be all right. Oh, see, hey, see, here you go. Here you go. Keep dreaming on that Nico shit. I mean, stuff. Sorry, pause. No, you did your one, too. You did your one, too. But yeah, he put, oh, yeah. I won that. Up, I was a little bit behind you, but you, you did your one, too. But yeah, he expected to practice yeah. this week. He may yeah. not play this week, though, but look, practicing, being out there on the field, that's one step. That's one step close. Um, Saquon Barkley still listed as questionable with that high ankle sprain. Mm-hmm. High ankle sprains last three or four weeks minimum. So this is like week three. Mm. I wouldn't expect him to play. He nope. probably doesn't even need to play with this blowout that's about to happen anyway. So give that man another week to rest. Tyler Higby, he's mm-hmm. uh, suffering a thumb injury. Uh, who knows if he'll go or not. We'll know more about it in a week. Dave, I know you're interested in hearing this. Cooper Cup practicing this week. That was a little return. We'll see what that hammy looks like. Maybe he'll play, maybe he won't. Maybe we'll get peek a poo one more week. We, we'll, we'll see. T. Higgins could still play somehow with his rib injury he suffered. So keep an eye on that. And last but not, not least, mm. no, nah, he don't need to play. He barely been playing. He don't anyway. need to play. He play look out there. Told y'all, by low on that whole team, they'll be ready in a couple weeks. Mike Evans, last but not least, Mike Evans with that hamstring injury. Hamstrings are rough with receivers. This, this, they need that. Like this is that's one of the worst injuries you can get as a receiver. Um, and he's had it before in the past. So we'll see how he recovers. They say he just tweaked it, so it wasn't like a, a whole pool. So maybe there's a chance he'll play soon. Maybe maybe this week or next week. Well, this week they're off. They got a bye week, so maybe next week. So that's probably the best thing for them. Yeah, exactly. That's gonna so help. those are the injuries. Not a bunch of injury news, but uh, that's what I got. What you, what you got for me over that Mega day? Hey, first, we're going to do just a quick recap of the week. Um, just to show, we, I mean, just in case you guys are behind on it. But Thursday, we had them Lions in Green Bay against the Packers, 34-20. to 20. Uh, The baby blue over there, they went out and looked uh, destructive. I mean, they was all over Jordan Love. That was a game that uh, – they did start coming back on them, but man, Lions look for real on both sides, like you said. Um, I, it was a good looking game. Then we went over to Jolly Old London, eh? And um, Jaguars put a hurting on the Falcons in Toy Story mode. I watched the whole game. Did you really? <laughs> Toy Story. I don't know if you guys watched any of it, but uh, yeah, I did. I watched the whole <laughs> thing like in Andy's room. Uh, I watched it on Disney Plus with, my, with a couple of my girls and, uh, it was a 
it was different. It was just, it was fun. I got them involved because they thought it was Toy Story. So that's the only way I can get them to watch football. But uh, Jaguars did it. You know, their defense looked for real. Uh, Desmond Ritter, man, I don't know. I don't know what's up with Arthur Smith and them. Broncos. (laughs) Oh, bro. Hey, have you guys heard the rumors? Have you guys heard the rumors about uh, Justin Fields in Atlanta? I heard a whole bunch. They need at least for right now put Taylor Heineke in and. uh, But they won't do it. They had the opportunity to do it Sunday. Arthur and Smith it, does what he wants. He's got big yeah. old huevos. And well, he, Arthur uh, Smith came out and said that that Desmond Ritter was their quarterback. He lied. Mm-mm. He lied. He ain't. I'm telling him now. He lying. Bijan, though, Bijan looked like a beast. He looks for real, too. He's another one of them rookies that, well, I mean, we you draft him in the first round. You expect him, and he he's doing what he should. Broncos. Swung out and beat the Bears. Actually, it was a good game. We thought it was going to be nasty. Uh, we thought it was going to be a Tubi game of the week, I think. And um, they made Fields look real damn good. Um, Denver just shows their their defense ain't nothing, but they still pulled it out. You know, uh, is what it is. Vikings. Coaching. Yeah, I mean, I, we'll see what happens this week. Vikings squeezed out against the Panthers. Got a W. That was one that just ugly all around. But Bryce Young is trash. We still we still know that. Buccaneers twenty six to nine over the Saints. Destroyed them. We had Kamara. I know uh, Big Maul. You put Kamara. He is uh, mm, delicious for PPR. But it, what do you do? Like twenty yards yeah. on thirteen yeah, catches. Something just like give that. Give me the catches. Give me the but catches. But it don't matter. <laughs> he, he got them catches. He he looked. Uh, he looked good for PPR only, but uh, Bucks was able to to Saints got a good defense and they they got manhandled. Uh, even with with you know our boy Mike being out, they still did good. Titans nasty destroyed twenty seven to three over the Bengals. Cincinnati is in all kinds of trouble. Uh, Jeremiah's team, I. I the whole team right now, like you said, they're going to get better. I expect them to get better as his calf gets better. But man, they need some help. They need Tennessee. To sit the, they need to sit they, they, the so, something because yeah. you're putting everybody. Jamar Chase is in. It's the, it's the, yeah, it's, it's looking bad. About to say, so, it's the like offensive Cincinnati, yeah. Cincinnati yeah. offensive line is bad. They've been yep. bad, right? Yep. And what I'm afraid that. They're gonna get that boy hurt, and Joe Burrow's a good quarterback, right? He's he one of the top. He's top five quarterback in the NFL, right? Yeah, he's out of the top ten right now, though. And I'm seeing the same thing happen with Andrew Luck. Yep, the same thing. Like, dude, you going out there and you paying these guys fifty, sixty million dollars a year? You have to give them an offensive line. These linebackers mm. and these DNs are too fast. These yep. D tackles. They're too fast, and you will get hurt. It ain't so, worth it right now. No. They, they they don't look like they're going to be playoff contention. Uh, they they got to get Burrow back in Tennessee. Ran for 10,000 yards. Derrick Henry, we all thought he was uh, wearing off, and uh, he taught us. Shut he up, threw, boy. Threw a touchdown. He threw a touchdown, too. Yep. <laughs> yep, he does whatever. He, they were way up. They could do whatever. And then you just mentioned him earlier, Mo. C.J. Stroud and the Texans went hung 30 points on the Steelers. Steelers look bad. I know they got their own problems, but uh, they were in a 16-0 hole and they couldn't dig out of it. C.J. Stroud looks for real. He's making all these uh, these rookies and everybody look silly with how good he's he is. He can quarter, read defense. He looks – yeah, he's an actual quarterback that can read defense. He's a star. Yes. And uh easily the best rookie right now. Um uh, those that was just a blowout, another blowout. The Ravens went and put a destruction 28 to 3 over the Browns. Mar Jackson scored every which way but loose. You had uh, you know, his favorite Mandrews finally looking good. Browns, you know, the defense can only do so much when the offense can't do nothing. So, you know, that was a 
a nasty, nasty blowout. Um, Rams overtime win 29 to 3, 20, 23 to the Colts. That was a big old game. And Puka still, he got the mojo. I know, Kang, you said he was falling off uh, 25 catches, 226 yards over the first two weeks, 163 yards last yeah. week. Boy still looks damn good. Uh, Colts, M- Michael Pittman still looks good. Uh, you know, but Anthony Richardson, he, he can I mean, run. Anthony Richardson put up thirty points, but his accuracy is still, is still it's not, not there. there. And, and 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 when you talk about Pika the Nuku or Pika the Tutu, whatever, we always got to remember one thing about Matthew Stafford. When he find a receiver that he can key on, he's going to throw him the ball Velcro. every every time. Velcro. With that, with that being said, his best receiver is coming back. Yeah. My baby. So where do you think he's going to go to all the time? Again? Oh, it's either Cooper Cup or he's going to hit Tutu at, at, at will down the field. That, mm-hmm. I, I've or seen Tyler. it for years. Yeah, that or, or check down. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yep. hey, if you got him, if you spent $100 like some people did, <laughs> hey, more power to you. Got your money. You got, you got your money's worth these couple weeks. One week it didn't help, but you still got Manny, your money. Manny blew the load on him. Blew Pause. The load. But, hey, that was a good game. Another overtime win. A surprise of the week for me. Eagles squeaked it out 34 to 31 over them Washington Commanders. <sighs> they played good. Sam Howell was sacked 19 times over three weeks. Um, but he they they looked decent, you know, at least against the Eagles. But the Eagles doing what the Eagles do. Uh, you know, Hurts threw for damn near 300 yards, two touchdowns. So they're going to keep rolling, I think. But uh, the big game of the week, Bills, 48 points against the Dolphins. You had uh, a chain go only run the ball eight times and scored big, but the Bills showed, like, this is our division. The Bills showed, like, they don't care that people were saying the Dolphins were unbeatable. They just went ahead and beat them. And did uh did Bill's things. So whew, I mean, Stefan Diggs, if you had him in like I mentioned in my DFS last week, if you had him, he was easily putting you towards the top. Uh it was a, a hell of a game. 120 yards for that man. Uh Chargers, 24 points against the Raiders, 17. Like you mentioned earlier, you had Josh Jacobs do some good stuff. Chargers still beat him. Uh Raiders ain't Ain't that good? So no, they, Chargers no. ain't either. No, they ain't. They they got some high powered here and there, but but Khalil Mack went and got six sacks uh, against the Raiders. So I mean, defense looked decent, but uh, they ain't that good. Neither one of them are good. Another massacre. Them boys hung thirty eight points on Bill Belly and uh, gave him probably the worst beating I ever seen Belichick take. Uh, three points for the Patriots. It's start time to grind tape for quarterbacks uh, for 2024 because uh, Mac Jones ain't it, it, y'all. Man, he, he, he never Cowboys look like I don't no. know what they saw on film to make them. You know that. that's that was, that was the guy. That's what they 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 think they thought they they thought they seen another Tom Brady and that's what they get. No, I'm glad he getting his brains beat in every week. Mm, 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 mm. Something I want to talk about though. Cowboys and Dak. Dak got less touchdowns than their defense. They can't keep hiding behind that defense. They got to play a real one this week coming up. And oh, yeah, uh, they got a real one this week. They got a the real realist. One. Now, if they they don't, the realist. you, you can't just rely the on defense. One. Yeah. It's, it's, is, is that why? What what's San Francisco colors? What isn't it like red, white, and black? Red, and gold. Red. Yeah, you just. You just missing some gold rings from that Popeye five. shirt you said. Popeye, man, man, we, <laughs> I mean, we, we, I get all that, that might as well be CMC. That might as well be CMC. Yeah, hey, that's one of them big man shirts. <laughs> yeah, we all go. Sometimes through that. you gotta wear one. That's exactly <laughs> what that is. <laughs> that, hey, do, do it. It's comfortable. You know, 
speaking of the Cowboys, you know, I, I live around a lot of Cowboy fans, a lot here in Texas. And it's right. the same thing. If you don't have that defense, you're not that good. Dak is not good. Pollard mm-hmm. came back too soon. It's just it is what it is. They yep. need a quarterback. And until they get a quarterback, they're not going to get to the promised land. Because no. trust me when no. I tell you, San Francisco is the real deal. It's Christian they, McCaffrey is the real deal. He'd be on. And, you know, they Dak put up good numbers, but – He's he's still Dak at the end. And uh, speaking of the real deal, them 49ers hung 35 points on the Cardinals. Cardinals didn't look – they don't look that bad, man. But uh, that 40, what are you going to do with CMC? He did every single thing well, it, that he wanted the, to do. Uh, it's the CMC show, Brock man. Purdy, too. Was, what are they you – know, he, dropped, he dropped 28 by himself. Like, it's the CMC man. show. You know, what you do? The best, the best running back in the league. Y'all are uh, – We might do it. It's a problem. He's 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 the best everything, the best player in the league, I would almost bet to say. And uh, Brock Purdy looks the real deal. I think you guys are 16-0 and through the last two years, 14-0 uh, and with Brock Purdy starting. So it's disgusting. Um, they got a Cowboys game this week. We're going to talk about it. But, man, they look good. Uh, then, you know, Chiefs barely squeaked out. With your boy Wilson, the Jets scored 20 on him against this good defense in the Chiefs. And uh, Mahomes didn't have the the game he wanted. Uh, He looked bad, you know, but uh, Pacheco did his thing. But good teams find a way to win. Uh, But the the win was ugly, you know. Nobody is scared of Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers. No. No. They they, they, they were playing. Yeah. Yeah. And they were playing. I don't know if you guys noticed. They were playing Kelsey all night. Yeah. They were spying him all night. So with that being said, I mean, certain people, if you have certain defenses like the Jets, because let's not get it twisted. Jets got a good defense. They might not have a good quarterback. They got a good defense. When you can put people on Kelsey, right, and spy him, that that, that's always been Mahomes. Even when Tyreek Hill was there, (laughs) check down to Kelsey. Kelsey's going to get open. He his could still be blanket. a little hurt. That's his security blanket. He could still yep. be hurt. I don't know. But, Patty, you got to do better than that, bro. You should have threw three or four picks. You threw two. Yep. You should have threw three or four. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to talk about him this week. But let's make a couple of dollars, y'all. Mega Dave's Fantasy Fortune, presented by DraftKings. All right, so we are on to week five. Hopefully, y'all made some money last week. I uh, made a couple dollars here and there. Nothing big and crazy, but uh, good enough where I didn't lose money. So if you guys are winning big, too, let us know down in the comments. We want to hear y'all's victories. If you're winning big this week, week five, I'm going with something a little crazy, okay? We just talked about this team. This is, of course, for Saturday Sunday main slate, $50,000 budget, okay, for week five. No Thursday game. My quarterback, I went down to the bargain bin. And, y'all, let me explain it. I'm going with quarterback Zach Wilson, the Jets at the Broncos for $4,900. Okay. There's only 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL and 32 backups. Maul, where do you rank Wilson on that list if I asked you to so guess 32 plus 32 the quarterback plus 64, this week? 64, 65. He's number 65. <laughs> he's number 65. <laughs> he wouldn't even be ranked, he wouldn't even be ranked among the 64. Wilson wasn't supposed to be here, <laughs> but he is. He struggled, and he's barely played well enough to win Carnival games this year. Uh, Sunday night against the Chiefs was a different Wilson, though. This was even better than Wilson back when he was fighting for the job with Tom Brady uh, his rookie year. And guess what? He was better than Patrick Mahomes, uh, at least that night. The Jets nearly won because of Wilson rather than in spite of him. Wilson led them Jets and hung the most points allowed this season by the Chiefs. Like you mentioned, uh, Kang, Chiefs got a good defense. They hung them points on him. He was dropping dimes. We already mentioned it. He was dropping dimes in tight windows. And now he gets to follow it up against probably the league's worst defense. Uh, you could see Wilson's confidence grow throughout the game, and the team backed him up. They really did. They were hating on him for a while. When he was leading them, they was backing him up. If he continues to play well, 
Uh, maybe all hope isn't lost for Zach Morris and them Jets, but he's $4,900. I'm going to buy the hype against this Broncos defense, allowing the second most fantasy points to a quarterback. Even if history has given us no reason to believe him, I'm going to go with one shot this week. Uh, if this low owned pick hits, he should easily finish above cash line uh, and save me room to get some big boys at other positions, which will lead me to Big Mall, B. John Robinson, $7,700. Falcons at the Texans. Robinson returns from his week over in jolly old London. He was rolling. He put up 100 yards on my Jags, and they got a good defense. Um, I don't expect Arthur Smith to change the damn thing now. Robinson gives Atlanta their best chance to win with a trash quarterback like they got. He's averaging almost 14 rushing attempts and five receptions a game. And even with a stubborn head coach, the Falcons should still be able to continue to give him the ball. He's their best player. Houston allows 23 fantasy points to running backs this season, so expect Atlanta to attack on the ground as they recover from jet lag. Because I got the money, this might have might as well have been an F3 show because my second running back, Detroit Lions, David Montgomery. Lions, you already said there's going to be a massacre, Kang. Uh, Lions versus the Panthers. I got Montgomery for 6600 bucks. Normally, it's best to fade a player coming off a three-touchdown performance. But Montgomery shined on Thursday against the pack. Detroit insists on making sure they got their money's worth out of this boy, um, even at the expense of the rookie. You know, Gibbs, he ain't doing what he should. But Mont, he carried the ball 32 times for 121 yards. He's averaged 23 carries a game through his first three games. That includes an injury short in week two. So he faces a Carolina run defense. They're giving up 27 points to their backs this year and allowing 136 rushing yards a game Montgomery's gonna eat you know I don't think they're gonna be able to slow Montgomery down behind one of the best and I said it the best offensive line in the league they look really good and I'm excited to have him eat this week my first wide receiver Chris Olave Saints at the Patriots for 6,900 bucks Olave he had a crap showing in week four just one catch on six targets for four yards but now he gets to deal with a banged-up Patriots defense. They just lost their cornerback, Christian Gonzalez, to a shoulder injury. New England ain't impressed me this season. I know they focus on defense, but their secondary looks suspect to me. Eric Carr is back. He's airing it out, and I'm a big fan of bounce-back games, making Olave a great choice uh, for Week 5. Most of Olave's value relies on Carr's shoulder, but with another week of treatment to get better, I think he's a good buy-low player, targeted almost 11 times per game first three weeks to stack my boy Zach Wilson going back with the Wilson you got to do Wilson Wilson right Garrett Wilson Jets at the Broncos six thousand dollars now building a DFS lineup as you know mall is all about two things finding value and separating yourself from the rest of the pack because everybody picks similar players there's probably not a single soul that's willing to stack Jets players right now even after they experience the highest of highs in a crushing loss to Taylor Swift and the Chiefs um, as long, <laughs> that was a good as, one. As long as Wilson, the quarterback, is looking for Wilson the receiver, we should be in for a treat. The knock on Justin Fields been that he's a running back pretending to play quarterback. He lit up Denver's defense, and Chicago should have won. Fields threw for three thirty-five and four touchdowns against a horrible defense. Wilson threw for two forty-five and two against one of the league's best this season. Well, not even having the ball the last seven minutes of the game. Jets' number one receiver was targeted 14 times last week, uh, bringing in nine catches for 60. If Zach Morris can replicate his performance in week five, Garrett should be in for a Did big day, Zach and I think Morris? the cheapy stack is worth <laughs> putting into my life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he renamed it to Zach Morris. Damn. He, he, looked, it he, looks, he looks just like him. <laughs> Saved by the best. Yeah. My other wide receiver, he's been quiet, but we got Jordan Addison. Vikings going to see them Chiefs, $5,300. Where the hell has Addison been? He had a red-hot start uh, this year. The rookie turned in to a dud last game. Addison took the shiny goose egg. Uh, he failed to catch his only target on a day where Minnesota's passing offense was trash. Um, I just told you all about how the Jets exploited Kansas City's pass defense with a quarterback many thought. Should have been out of the league by now. Kirk Cousins was putting up literally MVP numbers uh, before his meltdown last week. 
Addison will get back on track, though, for a team that desperately needs him to uh, to emerge. He's a superstar. He's going to get it. He just needs his time. My tight end, 4100 bucks. Tyler Higby, you just mentioned him. It's a little sore right now. Rams versus the Eagles. Death, taxes, and target the Eagles defense with tight ends. They give up the most points, the second most points in the NFL to tight ends. Higby just got that bag, too. Um, he should have another solid performance. He was targeted 11 times last week. He posted back-to-back -back weeks of 64 yards. He's been a top 10 tight end in fantasy. All year. Philly's defense, their third worst against fantasy's weakest position. They give up 13 fantasy points a game. I know they, they got a solid front line, but you know, they they give up a lot. Higby serves as a fine treatment option for me, and I project them to have a big old game, at least enough to cover up for my flex. And I know I own Mostert, but I just cannot ignore uh Devon a chain. Dolphins going to see them giants. I got a chain in there for sixty one hundred. A-Chan, formerly known as A-Chain, he's a one-man wrecking crew. Uh, no matter how you say his name, the running back is slowly eating away at my precious baby boy Mostert's workload uh, thanks to, I don't think, pace that he can keep up with this efficiency. Uh, he's averaging an unheard of 11.4 yards a carry. I turned in 101 yards and two touchdowns on eight carries. Listen to me. 101 yards on eight carries. I don't think he can sustain it, but the Giants defense, they ain't lived up to the hype. The Dolphins will look on and move quickly from a bad loss in Buffalo. Should also help, like you all mentioned earlier, they return home for the second time this season. Last time they played at home, they hung 70 points on Denver. So that, that flex should pay off, even if both Mostert and him might both eat. My defense, Titans at the Colts, 2400 bucks. Tennessee's defense is better than people give it credit for. Uh, the Colts can't throw the ball efficiently with Anthony Richardson. Kang, you already mentioned it. He he ain't reading right. He can run, you know, but uh, Titans are, are prepared for running. Uh, Mike Vrabel's Titans just held the Bengals to three points. They remain a solid team against the run, allowing just 70 yards. Richardson, they got to beat him through the air, and I don't think Richardson can beat them through there. Sometimes that's just the way it is to pick a defense. It's that easy, so... That's my lineup. Put it in y'all's. Let's get some money. Let's get some wins. Now, let's get into our favorite thing, them pick'ems. Uh, quick reminder, too. Chargers, Bucks, Seahawks, and Browns are all on by. So make sure y'all check your lineup. Don't get stuck. I know some people are going to forget about it. Like Ma was mentioning, people are going to be scrambling. So make sure you check your stuff. All right. So Thursday game, we got Chicago at the Commanders. The Commanders, six and a half point favorites. 44 and a half over under, you know, it, Bears is trash. They ain't giving them no respect. So, you know, me personally, I think the Bears honestly going to keep rolling. But Commanders, you know, I, I'm not going to pick yet. Let me see. Kang, who you got? The Bears. I, what are you I, thinking, Maul? Go ahead, Kang. Go ahead. I, I think that last that game last week with Justin Fields, the coach blew that game, not Justin Fields. That was yeah, coaching. He's, he's right? feeling himself, though. He's feeling himself, and he found his favorite target from last year again. He found him, what, two or three times, I think, three times? Mm -hmm. Commit. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead with the Bears this week. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'll take the Bears. For the upset, is that Paul, what upset? we thinking? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Six and a half point favorite. Time. Yeah. I mean, I told y'all <laughs> Justin Fields about to turn the Superman. He's about to turn the baby Cam. So he just like he about to run it. Um, Cole Komet, yeah, you're right, King. He's he's going to get some passes. He did his thing last week. I just feel like DJ Moore is a little bit of fool's goal. Um, Commanders are better than people think. Their defense is better than mm -hmm. people think. They just had some tough matchups the last few weeks. I like Terry McLaurin. I don't know what's going on with Jahan Dotson. I like Terry McLaurin. I like Brian Robinson. But yeah, give me the uh, give me the give me the Bears. I'm going with we were unanimous. I'm going with the Bears. This is kind of when Fields started turning up. You know, Game Six last year. He's he he's got to be feeling himself from last week. I think they're going to turn it up. Even though the commanders did fight with the Eagles, I'm, I'm taking the pair. So we all unanimous 
with that one. We got a tough one. First game uh, still over there in jolly old London. We got the the England Jaguars, you know, playing the Bills. Uh, Bills are five and a half point favorites over under 48. So they're saying they're going to throw it around. Uh, since I'm a Jaguar fan, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We upset the Bills last year. We upset the Bills again this year. Um, defense. Hey, they just destroyed Dolphins. They're over there feeling themselves partying. And uh, I don't give a damn. I'm taking my Jaguars. I don't care if they're 75 point underdogs. Go ahead. I'm go ahead, not even going to front, man. So, like, I always say, like, when somebody <laughs> travels from East Coast to West Coast or West Coast to East Coast, they usually are having a, they have, they have a bad game or not as good as they normally do because of that travel and stuff. These jokers traveling all across the water. The Jaguars are already over there. They're chilling. They got summer homes over there, whatever. Mm-hmm. So they're mm-hmm. already over there. Eating. So Bills got a travel now. So like they're gonna be tired. There's gonna be some jet lag. Like, they're not gonna be on the A game. And it's a perfect opportunity for the Jags to get a dub. Give me the Jags. I think Calvin Ridley has a better game than he did last week. I think mm-hmm. he's gonna get off. I think Tredavious White is hurt, so they're gonna take advantage of that. Yeah, give me them Jags. All right, Kang. <laughs> man, oh, man, oh, man. So, you're right. Jag's been over there for two weeks, eating crumb kits and half sipping tea. But y'all got to remember, too, this is when the Bills turn it up, too. And, and the Jags. No, no, no. I think the whole Ridley thing in, in Jacksonville is coming to a slower pace. They did pay Christian Kirk a lot of money, which now we see Kirk and Kirk is getting that he ball looks more. Good. Yeah. <laughs> He's the number one. That a few weeks obviously. Ago. Ingram looks good. Yeah. Ingram, <laughs> Ingram is starting to become Ingram that and mm, you know mm, that was my delicious. originally that was my stack was gonna be Trevor Lawrence and Ingram, and then y'all let Lamar and Mandrews go, so I had to take them. But, yep. man, all the controversy we always hear about Buffalo and Diggs and Josh Allen and Diggs, and, you know, we've never seen Buffalo really with a good running game. They have a good running game now. Mm-hmm. People are getting open. Um, Gabe Davis might catch him one, right? But, man, that Josh that Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, man, that stack is powerful. Yep. I'm expecting a high scoring game and Josh Allen to come out and play. I'm going with the Bills. Okay. Hey, that's not a bad uh bet, but like I, I think that jet lag is gonna play a big factor. Um we're gonna rush through a couple of them because they are trash games. Texans at the Falcons, you know, Atlanta two and a half point favorites, over under forty one points. Uh does it matter who wins? <laughs> I know you're over an ATL, but Texans, they are rolling. <sighs> they're still the Texans. Maybe I got biased because they're in my division, but uh, I, I just want to—I want to personally pick the Falcons just because I hate—I need the Texans to lose for them Jags. But in my heart, to be honest, I really want to say the Texans are going to win. Uh, that's how I feel, but I hate them, so I'm going to say them Falcons. So there's Go a ahead, guy ATL. on deep that plays defense for the Falcons, the best cornerback you never heard of. AJ Terrell. He's giving up <laughs> 0.6 yards per pass coming towards him. They still mm. got Jeff. They know. still got Jeff Okuda. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason Calvin really didn't do anything really last week. There's a reason the Falcons still win right. most of these games. Like they're legit. Texans cannot stop the run still. So you got Bijan over there, Tyler Algier. I like the Texans. I like the Texans, but I don't like them this week. Give me the Falcons. All right. Okay. Texans good, man. CJ CJ Stroud is was a good pick. It was a great pick. He looks great. I don't think that cornerback that you said, um, what's AJ his name? Again? Terrell, Terrell, yeah. Tyrell, which one? Go? Say, yeah, Terrell, say, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sun God tore him up for 102 yards. So, <laughs> I mean, 
you know, you got to take it for what what it's worth against who they play, right? That defense of the Texans, man. When you when you get a when you get into a bad culture and you lose forever, and then you start winning, they like to win, right? The yeah, Texans yeah. they like to win now. We all know that C.J. Stroud and that Nico Collins tandem is is the real deal. Last the week, Tank Dell, yeah. yeah. Couple of weeks ago, Tank Dell breakout. Tank Dell gonna tear you up. So if the Texans go out and put up a couple points, we all know Arthur Smith gonna just still run. <laughs> them Falcons cannot score, and they still gonna oh. run the ball. The Falcons is a, is 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 looking like a bad organization right now. I'm not gonna, you know, but you you should have kept Mr. Netflix instead of that trash you got. You'd be doing a lot yep. better with Mr. Netflix, right? At some point, ATL will start tanking, I think. But they don't have a choice because they're going to get their butts whooped. So it, whether you call it tanking or just flat out going to get Love. beat every week, you know, stop wasting them talent, man. Stop wasting pits. Stop wasting man. Drake London, right? Just stop. Just stop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Texans. Wasting Kyle Pitts. All right, we're going to stay with you, Kang, so keep keep up by the mic. Panthers at the Lions. Eight-and-a-half point favorites for the Lions. 43-and-a-half points um, for the Lions and the Panthers. So what's the line on it? Were you taking the eight-and-a-half points? I don't know if we get ready to watch a football game or the Olympics. You got two of the fastest men in the NFL playing on Sunday. Jameer Gibbs, 4-3. You all know Jameson Williams four two six. They're gonna put they're gonna put them Ferraris out there Sunday. And that defense, Wrong. top five defense, Aiden Hutchinson, <laughs> and that secondary. I mean, hey, hey, I'm gonna tell y'all this is a pick 'em for me. I'm sorry, Ma, this is a pick 'em for me. If you can get the Lions defense and DFS on Sunday, take them. Cause they' about to eat. They' gonna eat. Yeah, no, Bryce agree. Young is in trouble. That little sap is going to be in trouble. So you already know I'm going with Honolulu Blue. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and <laughs> hit that blue juice. Oh, he, too. He's <laughs> over here getting wet, y'all. I'm feeling myself. Uh, I'm getting wet. <laughs> I don't think there's nobody really uh, going to pick against the Lions as good as they look on a roll. I'm personally going with Lions. Maul, I'm, I'm sure you yeah. concur because yeah. uh, Panthers Dillon ain't it. On the Panther side. You know. No, last three, last three so weeks old. He's put up wide receiver one numbers. Put up the, if you grab that one, they're gonna do it. They yes. I mean, they're gonna be week. throwing for their life. Like like it's gonna Bryce be a tough one. Be throwing for his life. Thielen, old man, he still got good hands. He 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 he'll, he'll get some catches. But I mean, he might be the only one to catch a pass the whole game. Yeah. In the lines, like, he'll put icy hot icy hot on and uh, heal him up. All right, boring game after that. Titans and the Colts. Titans at the Colts. It's a one-point game for the Colts, you know, uh, 42 point over under. AFC South trash game. Both of them look mid. Since I'm an AFC South guy, I'm just gonna go ahead and say Colts are gonna win because they got a little bit better uh air game, you know, and Titans can't stop the air. That's what I'm going with. Go ahead and tell me what you think, Maul. It's pretty much a shoot 'em up here, I whichever think one you Derek want. Henry, so Henry continues his dominance. Um, he had a good game last week. All he, he like okay. the old car. He, once you get warmed up, you know he it's, it's kind of it's like he's good to go. Yeah, yeah. He got to pump yeah, the gas yeah, like and warm up for about three or four weeks. This is, this is week five. He ready? So yeah, give me, give me, give me the Titans. Okay, Kang, I'll take the Colts. Okay, Colts. Uh, they got a better air game. If, if Henry gets going, there he's gonna go. All right. This one's going to be my uh, back blowout, cheek clapping game of the week. Giants are going to go see them Dolphins. Nine and a half point favorites for the Dolphins at home. 49 and a half point over under. So what does that tell you? <laughs> that shows the Dolphins scoring 40 points. So that's just enough said. So this one should be back shot central. Close your ears. I'm sorry for everybody that's a Giants fan. They are upset about losing to the, the Bills so bad, and they are going to wear them out. Grudge, you know what? 
uh, is going to occur. So, Kang, I mean, I'm sure we all don't see no chance for Giants to do nothing, especially with no Saquon. So, what you think, Kang? <laughs> After that whooping that, that Buffalo put on Miami last week, Miami got something to prove. Tyreek oh, Hill has do. something to prove. Jalen Waddle has something to prove. Asian, Asian, A Chain, whatever they want to call him, he has something to prove. Make, Most that, 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 yeah, that their coach, what's his name? McDaniel's, Daniels, Daniels, whatever his name is. Daniels. Yeah. I mean, he came, he came, he came out that game. I'm gonna put it to you like this: that game that they blew out Denver, he was out in the field twerking before the yep. game started, clapping fives and 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 doing that with the players. If he come he out, got twerk. Yeah. So if he come out, Miami going to blow them out, man. Mm. It, it, it ain't even no – It's I'm, a bag. I'm looking at some DFS now. I'm trying to figure out how to start every Miami Dolphin player they got. And I'll I'll, I'll get a, a tight end from somewhere and, and something because they're going to put up so many points on Sunday. Mm-hmm. They got him they, – they st- whether we like to believe it, some teams do have pride in what they do and in themselves. The way mm-hmm. they got embarrassed on Sunday, they gonna come back out and say, "Hey, we still the Miami Dolphins." It's gonna, yep. it's gonna be man. Tyreek Hill might put up two hundred some yards that game, bro. Mm-mm-mm. What you I think? Paul? Same thing, I'm sure. Let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and run with the Dolphins. Everybody mm-hmm. start. Everybody. Yep. I'm easily taking the points on that one. I think they. It's an easy two point, a two score game. Um, a boring one, a real boring game. Saints are going to the Patriots. One and a half point favorites for the Patriots. We're going to rush through this. I don't want no piece of it. It's 39 points overall. Uh, I don't even think it gets to the points, to be honest with you. Uh, if I got to pick someone, Belichick, you know, they're at home. I'm going to take the Patriots, but I don't want to, you know. What you think, Maul? You don't want no piece who's, of it either. Who's at home? Who's at you got home? Kamara, so. That's Patriots. The Patriots, they're they're in. Uh, give, me the, give me the give me the home team. Patriots give me the Patriots because they're home. Because they probably they yeah. probably go cheat somehow, some way. Anyway. Thanks. Give me the <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. They already <laughs> yeah. they uh, they put some sleeping powder inside of their uh, their crabs or whatever their lobster cakes. But uh, what you think, Kang? So usually, when, usually when you have teams of this manner, the New Orleans Saints and the and the New England Patriots, you have a good game. However, to be game of the week. I knew it was coming. (laughs) This is the game of the week. Listen here. This is probably going to be one of those games that I won't even check the scores on. I don't have no fantasy players playing in them. This game is getting ready to be trash. Kamara might have 100 catches and the score still be 7-6. to <laughs> this game gonna be bad, man. Yeah, it's gonna be bad. <clears throat> Mac Jones is cool. Yeah, take Running, the under. Ezekiel Elliott, maybe he need to change his belly ring or something. I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> he boo boo. So yeah, this is to be game of the week. Yeah, that's. I agree with you. It's a bad one. Uh, another bad one. Only forty and a half points for this one. Ravens at the Steelers. Uh, you know, Ravens plus, you know, four point favorites. You know, they're at Steelers. Steelers ain't ain't good. This should be an easy sweep for them Ravens. Uh, Steelers ain't what they used to be. I'm taking the Ravens. King, what you think? So with the question of Kenny Pickett not playing this week and, and Trubisky playing this week, Deontay Johnson is still out. Yep. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers average .5 yards a carry. Got to love Najee. You know, Mike Tomlin used to be one of my favorite coaches and 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 best coaches. You falling off, my boy. You you oh, are man. falling <clears throat> off, my boy. Lamar Jackson and 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 Mandrews. Hey, they starting to tune themselves up again. You know, they starting. You you can definitely see when off season when they don't work out together, or even during preseason when they don't play no games together. That first and second week is kind of sluggish. You can definitely tell now because last week, the way those two were, they were they were back to that connection. I'm gonna take yeah. Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Mo, 
I got I got Baltimore's defense on my fantasy team, so yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm expecting about 15 <laughs> points out of the defense. Yep. Trubisky can't do anything. Mm-mm-mm. He can run a little bit. He actually can make probably some some better passes than than Pickett too. But Deontay Johnson not there. Yeah. Yeah, he can go. He could throw 12 yards. Exactly, down instead of seven. Instead yeah, of seven. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See what they can yeah, do. So you're taking the Ravens? He's, he's taking the Ravens. Ravens? Okay. Another boring game, just because, which I would have never guessed. Bengals going to see the Cardinals. Cardinals surprising. Bengals are somehow three point favorite, excuse me, four point favorites, uh, over under 42 and a half. I'm taking an upset. I think the Cardinals uh, are decent. They've hung in, the, in with big teams. Bengals is behind. I don't think this week is the week Joe Burrow is getting it together. So I'm taking the Cardinals for the upset. It's four points, so it ain't big. But uh, I think Joe Mixon will have a good game. I think this is, this is the game Joe Mixon pops. Mm-hmm. So it may be a good uh, DFS option. I, something's wrong with Joe Burrow. I need him. Like, something, something, some, something's legitimately wrong with him. I don't know if the Cavs still messing with him. Yeah, that Cavs? Something wrong. And he's afraid of that offensive line. I mm-hmm. like Josh Dobbs over there on, on, on the Cardinal side. He's legit. He's legit putting up numbers. He's putting up uh, close to 20 points almost every week. He is. Like, running a little bit, throwing a little bit. Michael Wilson, Hollywood Brown, James Conner. Still, cream rise to the top, man. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's do or die for the Bengals. I think they're going to do their thing and barely scrape by and they'll win. So give me the Bengals. Okay. What do you think, Kang? If you got T. Higgins, sell him now. Ben, ben, ben <laughs> tell him now. Right. Sell that joker. If, yep. Yep. if you got Jamar Chase, sell him now. Listen, Hot take. Anybody that plays the Arizona Cardinals this year, you might have a chance to lose. Mm-hmm. They they came out and played the top defense, and that top defense got embarrassed. We know the Arizona Cardinals are not tanking. That's number one. No. So they coming out to play. Yep. Dobbs, like Ma said, Dobbs is putting up. He putting up starting QB numbers. He putting up QB one yep. numbers. And Alopecia those, and all. Yeah, those receivers that they have, that Hollywood Brown and Wilson, they're not bad. Connor's not a bad. He was one of my sleepers a couple of years ago. So with that being said, man. Cincinnati is just not Cincinnati right now. They're not. Burrow's not Burrow. Chase is starting to complain, and Burrow's making some bad throws. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Yep. But I got a feeling he's going to end up throwing one of them balls, and one of them got kids are going to get hurt. So, yeah. you know, I know you got that pride, Burrow, and you got that 50 some million, but you might need to sit down for the rest of the sit. year. Yeah. He needs I'm, to sit. I, I'm taking the Cardinals. Yep. I agree with you. Now, another high flying game. I'm excited. This one I watch. Eagles going to see the Rams. Mm. Uh, Eagles four and a half points. So that shows the respect of Rams can't get them touchdowns, but they can. They, I think they're going to do good. Over under forty eight points. Uh, what do you think, King? Eagles better come to play. Mm-hmm. Cooper they, back, they, baby. They're going to have to put up some points. They're going to yeah. have to put up points. Mm-hmm. You know. You, <laughs> In the last couple of weeks, the Eagles have there's something not something's not gelling with the Eagles because you got two premier wide receivers, right? De- Deontay Smith can go to another team and he can be a number one receiver on some teams, but then you had Crybaby crying for the ball. Now they get now he getting all the light, getting the ball, and Smith a not getting yards. the ball, right? I do expect Swift to show out. I do expect I bet that. You do. Pick. I bet I, you do. I bet you do. I bet Swift to show out this week. Gosh, man! But you can't, you can't, you can't steer wrong because of the Eagles' defense. Mm-mm. Rams do have Aaron Donald, but then the Eagles got the best offensive line. So you pick your poison with this one. If I'm, what's the over under? It's forty eight. How many points the Eagles getting, or the Rams? Four and a half. Four and a half. On points alone, I'm taking the Eagles. Okay. They they cover. They I, I get them. I give them a tutty. Mm-hmm. What you think, Ma? 
Big Malls, Big Call. Give me the Rams. They're going to get Cooper Cup back. Hey, look, Kyron Williams is is legit putting up numbers. Mm-hmm. The Eagles have to come from East Coast Puka. to West Coast in LA, a little party area. It's just a perfect mm-hmm. storm. Like it's going to be a high scoring game. Obviously, by the total, it's going to be a high scoring game. I think Matthew Stafford want to show people he still got an arm. If Cooper Cup comes back and plays, he's going to have his boy, his old boy, and his new boy. And then it, I, I just think it's going to be a problem. Because the, think about it. The Eagles, Eagles playing people mm-hmm. a little too tight. Like, these games are a little too close. So they they, yeah. they, they playing with fire too much. Because they, they're on a high from last year, making it to the Super Bowl. People getting contracts. Got opening up car dealerships and walking around fur coats on in the summertime. You know, stuff like that. They're not focused. They're not focused. Go ahead and give me the Rams. Okay. I got a question for both of y'all right quick. Is it that the Eagles are not focused, or are we seeing that the Eagles had a slouch schedule last year and the Eagles playing like the Eagles? It could be, right? Or the people just figuring out him a little bit more, right? Because he's contained a lot more than he was last year because he was just running all over the place. So maybe they obviously they study tape and are able to pick up certain things. That's what I think. But they did have a slouch slouch uh, season last year. So that's, you know, that's what I think. Here's what I think with the Rams. I think they're going to put up some, obviously I got interest in both sides of it. I hope cup comes back and goes for 180 yards and three touchdowns. (laughs) Damn. If, but also, I hope, hope that, I I hope Hurts goes in. And, <laughs> I hope Hurts goes in three tush pushes in for touchdowns. You know, so Eagles got a really good defense. Uh, Kyron Williams probably ain't going to go off this week. You know, with that line that the Eagles got, they are a little. You know, Eagles got a decent up front, but their their secondary ain't as good. Uh, but I still think the Eagles are. Their defense looks too good to to lose this game. You know, they look really good. So I'm taking the Eagles, but Rams could surprise us. A boring game. We're going to rush through this one because don't nobody want to watch. The Jets go to the Broncos over under 40 points, two and a half point favorites for the Broncos. You know, Zach Wilson, Zach Morris is my start of the week in DFS. Don't mean I'm excited to watch him. I think he's they're going to do good against the Broncos. I'm personally going to take the Jets to upset the Broncos, but it's not a game I want to watch. You know, there's a, there's some better games like the one that's right after this one that we're going to talk about. But what you think, Maul? <laughs> game is going to be stinking. Smelling good now. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's bad. I forgot the two teams you said was playing. Pick honestly. one. I was like, it's so bad. J E T. J E T S and the Broncos. Give me at the Broncos. Broncos. It's at home. Like when it went out and both the teams right. funky, give me, yeah, give, they're me out. give me give me the home team. Give me the Broncos. Who you got, King? Jets. Okay. We we yeah, I feel we, the same. Don't forget the Jets still got one of the top defenses in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so hey, Hall back there, Wilson back there, Wilson and Wilson. Conklin, you, you got to go with the Jets because of the defense alone. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I, I think the Jets pulled it off, but uh, that's an ugly one. Good game. Probably going to be the game of the week. Chiefs, finally going to see them Vikings. Chiefs are five and a half point favorites over under 52 and a half points. So they're expecting Patrick to be back, to be throwing that thing. And this should be a fun game. This. I was in contention to put some uh, people. That's why I put Jordan Addison. I wanted a piece of him. But uh, let me see. Let me, before I make the decision, Kang, since you are a resident Chief fan. <laughs> Ain't that a go, so, go ahead. It definitely won't be 52 points. I can tell you that now. Yeah. Um, I think J.J. and Kelsey and Mahomes have a good game. Chiefs almost got embarrassed. Hmm. By the Jets. Mm-hmm. Well, Holmes will have a comeback game, but I don't think it's going to be. You know what? I'll take that back. I'll take that back. It'll be over 52. 
Um, probably be about 30. I'll go 35, 28, maybe the score. Okay. It'll be a good game. Minnesota's run game is trash. Yep. Pacheco got off last. Pacheco got off last week. But the Vikings don't have the defense to do what every other team has done with Travis Kelsey. Mm -mm. They don't have the defense to shadow him. Right? Mm -mm. So with that being said, the NFL is not going to let the Kansas City Chiefs go 0-2 playing the NFC. They know it. Uh-uh. So I'll take the Chiefs. If you got if you got Justin Jefferson, I mean hell, if you got Justin Jefferson any week, start him, right? But I Yo, think yeah. I think Addison gets him a tutty this weekend. That's what I need. What you think, Mo? I think them bullets loaded. I think it's the okay corral out there that they can go shoot out. Mm-hmm. Um I actually like, yeah. uh I w- I'm gonna do a stack with uh with cousins and um Tyler Hot and TJ Hawkinson. I think I think it's one of those games that everybody's gonna be mm-hmm. looking at uh JJ. I think I think Hawkinson gonna get off. Um start obviously start anybody that's or good Addison. on any team, start them. Like Madison probably is gonna yep. be trash. Yep. Cam Akers, I think, is gonna overtake that position in the next three or four weeks. Cause he just looks more mm-hmm. explosive. He look- yeah, he showed he showed some of that last yeah. weekend. Yeah, he showed me something. Madison. So who are you taking? You taking the yeah, Chiefs? Yeah, Chiefs, of course, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, of course. <laughs> Vikings, Vikings defense is trash. That look, thank God they got an offense. But you see what happens when uh, they can't stop and they can't keep up with it. If he has an off game, they 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 can't win. Um, I don't think there's nothing Vikings defense can do to slow down them Chiefs, even if they ain't playing on point. Like he said, they ain't got no run defense. Pacheco might go off again back to back. So it, it's going to be a national. I'm going to say this. I, 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 say this I, I don't. I just if if Kelsey doesn't have a good game this this week, something wrong. I think some like some some is legit going on. He just like I know he hyperextended yeah. that knee, but if he don't have a good game this week, he's not even near healthy. He just out there. He just out there like being a decoy. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't even running his routes right. I noticed that mm-hmm. playing the Jets. He ain't – he ain't. He, Kelsey is that tight end that gets open, right? He mm-hmm. ain't He ain't running him right. And it's it, teams are noticing that because it's easier to shadow him with him not being 100% healthy. Yeah, yeah, because he lost – literally lost a step. I'm sure Taylor Swift will be in attendance, though. So we're going to see what happens now. We got what I'm going to call the Big D eggplant game of the week. We got Cowboys at the Niners. <laughs> this one, you got the 49ers, three and a half points. And I'm sorry, kids. <laughs> but we got the 49ers, three and a half point favorites. Over under, it's kind of low, 45 points. Cowboys D is for real. So is the 49ers. Me personally, I'm gonna, I am already know what you're going to say, Maul. I think the 49ers offense is too much. For the Cowboys defense, even though they are solid, Cowboys look suspect too. Uh, you know, Arizona put it on them. So I'm taking the 49ers. I still think CMC has a good game. Maul, I already know what you're thinking, but unless you see something different, I don't see. What do you think? Both of the teams, like, I'm a, I hate it. First of all, I hate the Cowboys. Like, that's just, that's just in my blood yeah. as a 49er fan. But to be legit, but to be real, both mm-hmm. teams are good. The difference is the 49ers are better on offense than the Cowboys are. Like they have they have, the Cowboys yeah. have too many deficiencies on offense for them to be able to withstand I agree. the 49ers defense. And see the 49ers have enough on offense that they can do what they need to do against that stout Cowboys defense. Like the Cowboys defense is legit. Um it but is. very legit on both sides. Um, I do give the Cowboys mm-hmm. a little edge on special teams um, with that return they got, but nah, we we give 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 me give me a dub. Come on, give me a dub with them forty nine. We good. We five and up. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Texas boy, what are we thinking? So, like Maul said, it's in my blood. I hate the Cowboys. I cannot stand <laughs> the Cowboys. However. However, the San Francisco 49ers have not 
been up against. I'm not even going to say a defense. They ain't been up against nobody like Parsons. That's true. Brock Purdy has not had no pressure like Parsons and pressure bus pipes. Stephon Gilmore with his old self, he can still play cornerback, right? So the 49ers get a lot of their offense from CMC due to the fact that a lot of people are scared to match up against not just Ayuk and Kittle, and you know they're Ferrari too, Debo. A lot of teams can't match up with that. The Cowboys can match up with that, right? I expect a low-scoring game. I do. I expect a very good, here's the NFC Championship game, maybe, with them Lions. I'm going to have to take Dallas. Oh, Lord. Mm. The upset. I'm yeah, at, there's I'm no at, chance. I'm going to have to take Dallas because if it when it comes to – man, listen – Michael Parsons is probably God. You you can never put nobody on defense again up to Lawrence Taylor or Ray Lewis. Do you all agree? Yeah. Micah Parsons is third. Mm-hmm. That kid is that good that he can he can change a game at any instance. Right? I think they slow see about to see. I, yeah, we about to see. I think they. This slow, is the game. Yeah, they slow. Everybody's CM, waiting. They slow CMC down. They slow him down this week. So I'm gonna take Dallas. If we can, if we can see him, but again, like you mentioned too, 49ers ain't played no defense. Cowboys ain't played no teams either. Jets, Giants, you know, trash teams. So we're about to see. This is the one people are looking for. I think it's gonna be lower scoring, but the offense. On the 49ers is nasty if they get rolling. And the last game we got, probably a boring game, too. It's a Monday night game. I wish it was a better one, but we got Packers at the Raiders. One and a half point favorites for the Packers. Trash, 43 and a half points uh, over under. It's a primetime game for the Raiders. Go ahead, Kang. I, I really don't want no piece of it. I might, hey, that's well, probably one of the Monday night. I can't use the excuse of not going to the gym on Tuesday because I'm watching foot Monday night football. That's for sure. I, uh, think, I think Adams it, comes out and has a good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to let the Green revenge, Bay Packers. Revenge yeah. game. Yeah, I think that's going to be a revenge game. Jordan Love ain't good, man. He's not good. Christian Watson had uh Aaron Rodgers moment last year. He's not <laughs> – the Packers ain't good, bro. They got some okay no. defense. The Packers are not good. So I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take the Raiders. Ah, that's a, okay. It's gross. That's it's close, gross. That's close way. to like that's co- that's close to them to be two dot oh game, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the Raiders. It's something that I'm not going to watch. I'm not even going to pull no DFS. I'm not going to pull no underdog. I'm not pulling nothing because that game is going to be trash. Yeah. No, I agree with you. What you think, I actually Mom? disagree with both of y'all. I think it's going to be a, a pretty high-scoring game. You got two sorry teams like that Uh-oh. with horrible defenses. Like They got firepower. Both teams have firepower on the offensive side, and their defenses are horrible. Like, I think they're going to put up numbers. If Jimmy G plays, I like Jacoby Myers. I like Devontae Adams. I even like Josh Jacobs a little bit. Like, they're going to put up some numbers. I mean, you got to think about it. Green Bay got a bunch of weapons, too. Like, Christian Watson is good. Romeo mm-hmm. Dobbs is good. That slot guy, Dobb. Reed, he's legit. Yeah. Reed, yeah. And I also got Aaron Jones. But it's- so who are you taking, then? I know you just didn't say they got Aaron Jones. They got Aaron I Jones. know you did. They got Aaron Jones. They got him. I don't know. I don't know if his hamstring. Will be. Man, they can have. I don't know if his hamstring will be there, but they got him. Like he over there. He over there. Man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play Aaron Jones or AJ Dillon. Well, I'm trying to sell, but I'm trying to sell him. I told you to sell. Him. He, 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 he don't, you can. He, <laughs> I told you. Right. <laughs> told you to buy low. If you can. No. So who 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 who, who you taking then? They at home. Who at home? <laughs> Raiders. 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 
shooter in you. You know. <laughs> He just woke up for both teams. Oh, man. I think, man, it's such it's a gross one. I'm going to go watch a movie or something else instead of this one. I don't think I got any piece of this. I got Luke Musgrave, but I ain't playing him. I'm going to take the Packers just because I live up here, and uh, I don't want to watch it, though. So I'm going to take the Packers. They do got weapons. I think Christian Watson finally has him a good night. Uh, maybe it go. I don't. I don't know. They both are trash. I don't want to watch it. But that's all the game. So we'll recap it uh, next week. But this was another good one, y'all. You know, I appreciate y'all as always. You know, we got some good insight on the games. We got some DFS coming up. So y'all keep rocking with us. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Keep rocking with y'all's boys. We're gonna keep coming with y'all, doing things a little different, like we told y'all. And until we come to y'all again, as well, I, I just I appreciate this. I, this is something I look forward to uh, every week. We get to talk football and fragrances, you know. Uh, but that's all we got for y'all this week. Until we come to y'all again, y'all keep smelling good. Big Maul, you need, you need a man. big move called Big Maul. Week five. Good luck, everybody. Yes, yes, sir. And Kang, always my boy. Watch them blowouts this week. <laughs> That's all we're going to recap them. Four and one. Yep. We're going to recap for you, but we're going to see y'all, and I appreciate y'all, boys. We'll holler at y'all.